Welcome back to another Mr. Lee Teaches YouTube tutorial. Today I'm going to revisit one of my favorite applications. It's NetOut Vision for Chromebook. And NetOut Vision for Chromebook is one of the Chromebook monitoring tools where the teacher can see the screen on the student's device and, and interact with the students to a certain extent. Um, we're going to go through it. I've done a video on this before. It should be linked right there anytime now. You can go back and look at the old way of it, but it, they've made some really great improvements to the system. And so I wanted to do a new video to kind of show you, walk you through some of the new things. But then we're just going to do a complete tutorial. So this is the first time you've ever seen NetApp Vision for Chromebooks. Uh, this will take you start to finish with everything you need to know, and hopefully we'll make it quick. So let's check it out. So the first thing you got to know is that NetApp is an extension, well, we'll call it NetApp, NetApp Vision, uh, is an extension that runs in the, in the browser for the students, and then it's also an app on the student's device. So the students are going to need an app and an extension uh, for, for their side of things. And, and if you're in a managed uh, district or a managed uh, Google system, uh, you can just push that out to them, have it forced installed, um, and that's all you got to do. The students will need to log in. Uh, but it's a, it's a simple box, and I'll show you that on the student side as well. Um, but on the teacher side, if you're using a PC, then you're going to need the MSI to install or the EXE file uh, to install it uh, locally. There used to be a Chrome app that would run for the teachers, uh, but Google is doing away with Chrome apps on PCs. So uh, NetApp has made an actual install file uh, for their application for PCs, and that's easy to download off the internet. Uh, but let's get into the actually app, actual app itself. So I've opened the application. This is what it looks like on the, on the main part. And it says go to classrooms. And what Vision does to get the students into your class so that you can monitor your class is it looks at your Google Classroom roster. So if your students are in Google Classroom for you already or you have created Google Classrooms, um, as long as the students are in a Google Classroom that you are the teacher of, you can look at their Chromebooks uh, screens through Vision for Chromebooks. Now, if you do not use Google Classroom, you can link rostering through your, your student information system. Um, that is not something I have had experience with. Uh, it should work fine, but again, I've never, uh, I've never used that. It's always, I've always used the uh, rostering through Google Classroom. So either way you do it, we'll go to Google Classrooms. Uh, oh, I have an update. And then I'm going to pick one of my classrooms that I have an example student in. Here we go. And so these are friends of mine. They're going to be offline. But this is my student account that I'm logged into on a Chromebook right here. Now, as you see, I have this pop-up screen automatically come up on my Chromebook. Now, if it didn't automatically come up, I would have the student go in, find the NetApp Vision app on their Chromebook, click on it, and it'll have a sign-in button. Once they sign in, then they'll be asked to share the screen. So what the students will have to do is click share the screen and see they get to choose right now if they want to share audio or not. Most of them will ignore that, but you can also tell them that they have to leave that on so that you could also listen to the audio, not just see the screen if you choose to uh, as the teacher. But then they'll have to share. And then once they share, it says, OK, you're now sharing your screen. So we can actually X out of that. Um, if the student X is out of that, that's not a problem at all. Now you're saying, what if the student says, no, I'm not going to share my screen? What happens then is that pop-up just keeps coming. So they can come in here and stop sharing, and it asks them to share their screen again. So they hit cancel. It asks them to share the screen again. So they can't do anything while you're trying to get them to share their screen. So they'll just eventually have to give up and share the screen. So once they've shared the screen, you now on the teacher side can view all the screens that are popping up uh, as a class or if you want to view this individual student you can click on the view button and it'll take a second but then you get a big more full-size view of their screen and it is almost real time you see the black mouse on the teacher side is almost real time of the black mouse on the Chromebook student side. So um, here I can take a screenshot of what's on the screen. If I click that button, 
it now has a screenshot in my desk my downloads folder i can go back and that's great for if you're wanting to show a parent at a conference what the student was actually doing at the time but let's uh you can also listen to the, so if the students are listening to something with headphones or something like that and you want to know what they're listening to you can unmute it it comes default to muted thankfully uh, but you can unmute it and then the audio comes through as well uh, which is a really nice feature to know what they're listening to if let's say they got youtube opened in a different tab so you're not actually seeing what's actually being played on youtube you could just real quick listen to it and say oh yeah that's appropriate or, oh no we need to have a conversation few of the things real quick that you can do uh, you can demo your screen so if i click the demo button and i share my screen number one and i share it on the student side now the student sees what i see so if I'm wanting to demo something to the students, I can click the demo button and then all of a sudden the student sees what I see and I can walk them through a process. They can't control anything on the screen. You see that there's not even a mouse uh, available for them. So this just takes over their screen and it's a very cool feature. If I want to turn it off, I just click it and turn it off. Now I can select a student and I can demo the screen for that student just the same way. These students will not see the demo. This student will. So if you select a student or even a group of students, all of these controls then become specific to whichever students are selected. If I don't have any students selected, all of these controls manage the whole class. So if I want to send a message to my students, I can send a message to the whole class like this, or I can again select a student and send a message. Show it on the whole screen and send. And now the student, it pops up a message. They have to acknowledge receipt of that message before they can do anything. They can't click out of it. They can't do anything else. They have to acknowledge that they got that. Um, so you, you have that, that two-way communication, even if it's not them messaging you back. They at least have to acknowledge that they heard what you said or read what you said. Um, you can push a link. So if you wanted to push a link, let's just say we, we want the whole class to go to CNN. So I can push that link and it opens up that tab on their device automatically. They don't have to click anything. They don't have to acknowledge anything. You as the teacher push it out. It opens for them. Now, if I want their attention, so we're working and I need everybody's attention instead of just yelling and screaming like, Hey, put your Chromebooks down, you know, close the screens, whatever you do, you can actually just lock the screens real quick. So you click the, the little exclamation mark button and then now, it says no peaking and it has the student's name. This student name is, is CHS example. So it says no peaking CHS. There are several different of these kinds of screens that'll pop up. So it's not the same one every time, uh, but they all do the same thing. There is no way for the student. There's no mouse. There's, there's no way for the student to get out of this screen. Um, now they can pull up, but you see, I can't, I still can't do anything. So I can pull up and see my apps but it keeps, it won't let me, it won't let me do anything with it. Um, so we'll turn that off. And here's a web filter. So this is a web filter. It's much, much improved. This is one of the great things that NetApp has improved about their system since the last time I made a video. It is a web filter that you control just for your class. So if you are doing a research project and you only want the students to go to five or six different sites, uh, you can actually set that whitelist turn on the web filter and once that web filter is turned on that site was not on the list so it has now blocked me from that site it doesn't mean I can't go to other sites I still get access to go to whatever sites are on that whitelist and I will show you how to set that whitelist very easily in just a minute the invert selection so I've selected one student and if I want to select the rest of the class and not that student, I just invert my selection. That's just an easy thing for teachers to do. It doesn't have a lot of functionality with the students, but it makes it easy for you if you have the class split in, in half and you're dealing with one half of the class and you just want to invert it real quick, you can invert it real quick. Um, that can be a handy little tool uh, or, or it can be something that you never click on again. Now, your, your snowman menu. So when you click on your snowman menu, you can change the way that the, the students are sorted you can tell if you want to see offline students or not right now i have it set for that if i uncheck that then anybody that's offline just doesn't show up uh, i typically tell teachers to leave that on and that way they know if a student isn't logged in um, doesn't have their chromebook turned on maybe they just have their chromebook open so they look like they're working but they're not actually 
don't even have it even turned on. Um, or maybe they're having some other internet or connection issues. And so that way you can see that. The snowman menu again, show the student names and photos. So that's why there's a photo and a name. If I turn that off, now I just have to mouse over and see the names. Uh, I don't get to just glance at it. So I typically tell teachers it's probably a good idea just to leave that turned on. Plus, a lot of times I'll suggest to teachers to leave this view pulled up on their projector. And so that way the kids kind of police themselves. They can kind of glance up there and see who all's on task, who all's off task. And you can be in the back of the classroom and glance up at the screen real quick and you can see who's on task, who's doing what. Just as a quick check. But the, the students really police themselves a lot of times. Also, you can use a dark theme. Uh, you know, if that's something you want to do, you can do the web filter. I'm going to show you that in just a second. And then you can, you can sign out. You can also get support here real, real quick. So, but the web filter, that's what we were just talking about a while ago. If you click on that, you get all of your lists that you have created. I'm going to show you how to create those lists. And I'm also going to show you how to make this a little bit easier for you to work. So I'm going to go back out of here. So any, any list that you turn on and you can click on the list and you can see everything in that list. And so I'll go back. I go back in here, web filter, and Google. So I click on that one. This shows you all the websites that are allowed for this list. So you can glance at it again. If you forget what was in a particular list, you can always look before you turn it on or turn it off. Um, now, my class automatically started when I when I opened this, and that's because I set it in the teacher dashboard. Typically, if you don't have it set in the teacher dashboard dashboard, when you open your class, you're going to have a play button you'll have to start the class so if you click that it'll start the class uh, once I am done with my class though I need to stop my class and it's important to stop your class because if you don't that student goes to the next class period and that teacher tries to use vision to look at their students well he's still in your class he's still being monitored by you and only one teacher at a time can actually view that student in a nutshell that's your controls over your class if you need to go back and pick a different class that's what this little three dot square I don't know what you want to call it uh, if you click on that it takes you back to all of your classes so then you can pick on the next class and open it up and start over again with the next class if you go in and make a change so if you add a student and then you want to go immediately start monitoring the class you can't always just click this button, sync with Google Classroom. It'll sync real quick, pull in any new changes uh, that have been made in the last little bit. This does sync automatically when you close it out and you reopen it. It'll do an initial sync every time you open it. So the thing I was going to show you, though, how to set your filters, and then also you can automatically start your class when you open it. So you don't have to remember to start it, but you do need to remember to stop it. So if you go to vision.netop.com, it will bring you to a login screen. You'll just log in with Google or however you log in. If you're rostered through Clever, you could use Clever. Uh, if you're Microsoft, you could use Microsoft. And so here's a list of all of your custom made whitelists. Now, this isn't all the ones you have because NetApp automatically creates that Google Applications one that we saw earlier. So you don't have to create that one. That one's there. So this is the ones you've made. So this is the one I've made. If I want to make a new one, I can just click the plus. I can give it a new name. So I can call it project link so I know what it is. There we go. I add a new link. So I grab a new link. I can paste it in. I hit enter. It's added. Um, I can type in a link. And it'll add it. So however I want to get this link, I can just add these here. Um, I can turn it on. And now we're good to go. So when I go back to my filter list, if it's turned on in here, it will show up. In here. So as I work on the web, this is just a web portal, and create my new lists of whitelist links, when I come back in, I can come back and find them here and then any time that I click on the web filter, the globe with the lock, it will apply whatever I have turned on in this portal. So you see these are turned on. If I turn this off, now there's nothing being, there's nothing whitelisted. So when I turn on this, there's nothing for them to go to. It completely blocks them. They can't go anywhere because there is no whitelist to go to. So I can turn it off 
and then now it will let them go wherever they're supposed to be able to go uh, based off your security settings. One other thing I wanted to show you in the vision.netop.com, if you come over here to teacher settings, you can tell it to automatically start the class. So that's how I had mine set. So when I first opened it, I didn't have to hit the play button to start it. I had this set so that it automatically started as soon as I opened the class. I can also set it to stop the class after a certain time period. I've got it set for 45 minutes. Obviously this video isn't that long. So you can change it to however long you want it to be open and it will stop for you. And that way you don't have to remember every time to hit the stop button. Um, it will stop after the 45 minutes or 30 minutes and you don't even have to remember, you know, think about it. Now, monitoring the students. So remember we have to share the screen. So the students have to give us permission to share the screen. That's so that we can see everything on the screen. That's a Google policy. It's a permissions privacy kind of policy with Google. If we only want to view the tab, so whatever open tab they have, if we select that one, the students aren't prompted at all. It just automatically shares with you, but you can only see that tab that they have actively open at that time. You can't see what's going on behind it if they open up a file. And that's one of the things why I tell teachers to just go ahead and make the student share it with you because that way if they open up a picture of some notes, well, that's not going to show up if you're just looking at the tab. And they can have a picture of notes looking at it while the tab is the test. And it looks like they're doing what they're supposed to, but they could have a picture or a text file or some other thing on the Chromebook that they have access to that you can't see if it's not in that tab. So if you leave it on the Chromebook main screen, it will require permission from the students, but you can see everything that student is doing, not just what's happening in the in the tab. But that's it. That's not that's NetOp Vision for Chromebooks in a nutshell. Uh, it's a wonderful program. I have looked at many many others out there, and NetOp just does it right. It does it well. It works, and it's very clean, simple interface. And the customer service is wonderful. Every time I pick up the phone, I get a human being. I talk to them. It's not just a monitoring tool. It's a great instructional tool as well. Again, thanks for watching my videos. Uh, if you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up. If you really liked what you saw, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and you can ring the little bell next to that and uh, you'll get notified every time I put out a new video. I am kind of sort of back on track doing videos once a week. So um, hopefully I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.